Um, that was the Eagles. And we're now um, very pleased to welcome um, on the line um, uh, Miriam Jones. Um, Miriam, um, can you hear me, Miriam? I sure can, yeah. Hi, it's lovely to, lovely to chat to you. And then we got overtaken and the Eagles suddenly finished, so I had to just sort of <laughs> rush over the other side of the studio. But um, you're going to be playing at uh, Chapel A House um, on this Saturday, March the 21st. And it's a lovely venue, actually, Chapel A House. Um, and uh, so you're, uh, if, if people haven't heard of, of you, Miriam, I'm sure they will do very soon, but you, um, you uh, are Americana Roots pop singer-songwriter. We're very keen on singer-songwriters in this part of the world. So how would you describe yourself? That's the description I've got here. <laughs> yeah, um, I think in terms of my process, uh, singer-songwriter has, has been about right. Um, the songs are really important to me, and um, I take time to, to craft what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. Um, so in that sense, it's singer-songwriter. Um, but I think, especially in later years, I've tried to push out and um, musically I enjoy, I enjoy a band and a bit of spirit. So it's, it's nice. I think it's, uh, especially this album, is a nice blend of kind of Americana roots uh, with a real singer-songwriter heart. And uh, this this latest album, um, you do uh, a lot of your tracks are kind of short stories. Tell us a bit about that. Why why you decided to kind of tackle it in that way? Um, part of it, I think. Well, wh one of the main things for me with this album is that uh, everything I've written about um, is well. Most of the songs are not about me, um, but they're stories I've seen occurring in other people's lives, and I tell them in first person as if it was happening to me. Um, but that's really an important way of me entering in and really um, getting some emotion um, connected to to the story. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I just, they all kind of came out. Um, fairly short and I did some work to try and keep some concise. I, I wanted this album to be full of just, uh, I wanted it to be neat and not have anything extra, you know, to really let the, the song be the, the main event and the story and the, and the voice. And um, so where do you, what would you say, in, I know people ask this question, it's, but I am very interested in how the influences that make someone in, in, into a certain style, because everyone has their own style in the end as a singer-songwriter, but, but you, you, are, you are inevitably, I would say, everybody is inevitably influenced by others. Who, who's been your greatest influence? Um, yeah, it is a tricky one. I think for me more than I've conscious of. I, like my parents were from uh, the southern U.S. and although I was born in Canada and grew up there, I spent a bit of time in Nashville growing up and uh, I was never kind of old enough to participate really in the scene. Maybe a little bit I did when I was 16, but it was always in the background and because I grew up in small towns, um, Nashville was the one uh, scene that I had any sort of connection to because there was no um, art really in where I was in in the, the Rockies in, in British Columbia. Um, so I think that definitely that's what comes naturally to me, that style of, of, of writing. Um, but definitely for me it's always been about ideas and mm -hmm. I've been a very solitary uh, person in a way, but definitely a solitary writer and really driven by things I wanted to say um, rather than styles that I wanted to generate. Um, although it has been important to me always to write things that um, that I think have a melodic appeal and that are easy to sit and that are catchy for people. So trying to kind of match Mary content with with some more popular sensibilities, I guess. 
I mean, it's an area of music in a way that women that women come to the fore in, really. I mean, not that women aren't active in all areas of music, but the singer-songwriter seems to fit very comfortably with a kind of um, um, a lot of women sort of um, artists, singers. Am I? Do I get that? Do I get that feeling? Is that right? Do you think? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think there's... I'm not stereotyping anybody. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it maybe It's sometimes hard for women maybe to break out of the mold of, of just singer-songwriters. I, I mean, certainly when I think of singer-songwriters, you know, I probably, like most people, my immediate thought is it's kind of um, sort of a little bit introspective and soft and, and that's not something that I that I sort of lean towards. I I, I, I write because I want to it, I want people to enjoy the music. Yeah. I want yeah. I want the audience to enjoy it and I don't just I don't sit down thinking, oh what will people like? But no. I <laughs> but at my end is really to to please listeners. But I want people to be pleased and to enjoy the the song. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of good see women writers that there have been for a long time, really. But yes, I know what you mean. It's not all soft and all about um, emotions and love. It's it's about what's going on in the world, isn't it? And uh, yeah. some very progressive um, um, elements, really, to the singer-songwriter, the female singer-songwriter world now, aren't there? So it's it's yeah, a lot and a lot of variation as well because you do kind of the pop and the folk and you you, you cover a broad range of styles, really, blues and roots type stuff I mean it, that's great you don't you don't have to be categorized into just into sort of folk on its own for example mm -hmm. I think a lot of what people what makes people put things in a genre is comes down to instrumentation as well mm -hmm. yeah and, and how how beefy the sound is and yeah just what kind of players and what they're yeah. playing and so what you put around it is much um, of importance and is sometimes with what the, how the song writing is. Tell us, um, you've, have you toured in the UK before? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've lived here for seven years, so I've, I've played around a little bit, but um, my first kind of real tour that I did here was in December with um, Roddy Frame, who was the lead singer of Aztec Camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he was so... Um, that was really fun. We did kind of concert hall things around the UK, and I, I was awesome. I really loved it. I did it with um, me and a bass player and producer did a, a duo set. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was kind well, of... Well, that sounds fun, yeah. Yeah, it was really fun. It was great to have that happen before the album was even out. Yeah. And now, and are you touring... I'm obviously doing the Leeds um, gig on uh, this Saturday at the Chapel A House. Um, is that part of a, a tour that you're on now? Um, it kind of comes at the tail end of some stuff I did in February to launch uh -huh, the album. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I have more gigs coming up in May around the UK. Um, and those are all up on, on my website. But going to some of the places that I went to with Roddy in December... And then in July as well, the band will be doing a few festivals, so that should be great too. And your album, what's the name of your album? I know we're going to play a song from the album in a minute. The song's called Cracks, but what's the what's the title of the album? Uh, the album is called Between Green and Gone. Between Green and oh. Gone. And um, uh, so, uh, so obviously you're promoting your album, um, and uh, you're on the you're on the tour now. And I have have you do you, do you know much about the Chapel A House? Because it's a lovely intimate venue there this Saturday. Yeah, I mean, just what I've seen kind of online. I've never been there. I kind of been describing it to people, rightly or wrongly, as a glorified house concert. Yeah, I think <laughs> of so. Which I have done quite a few house concerts. So <laughs> that's great, Thanks. though. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that, yeah, and uh, people are playing in smaller venues, you know, even uh, massive big stars and uh, decided it's the intimacy, which we don't seem to get these days in a lot of venues, you know, you don't get that, so it's kind of, that's a bit back to roots, isn't it, and doing it in people's yeah. front rooms, so it's great, so it's nice to mix yeah. that with some, I suspect some of the other venues are quite big as well. 
So, Miriam, thank you ever so much for coming on the radio this afternoon and telling us a bit about your tour and a bit about your music. I know oh, you've got you. a lot of fans out there, and, um, you know, there's lots... I mean, as I say, our co-presenter, John, is a massive fan, and he's poorly today, and he couldn't be in the studio. He's going to be... Oh. He's as sick as a parrot that he can't have spoken... that he hasn't been able to oh, speak to this afternoon. So he's part of your big fan base, but... Have a lovely, um, enjoy your tour, um, and, and um, just to let people know that they can get tickets from their website, Chapel A House Concerts website, if people are interested, I'm sure they are, and getting a ticket, but you have to get in there pretty quick to get a ticket now, because it's, it's quite a small room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so this is um, a song from your album, uh, Between Green and Gone, and this is called Cracks. Thank you very much, Ma Miriam. Uh, speak to you again. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. We were never so in love. Couple drinks and conversation. This is BC 